You may have noticed in the last few weeks a decided uptick in the number of families in parks, along the streets, and just about anywhere you go. It doesn't matter whether you're traveling on transit, heading into work once again, or just taking care of errands around town. Families are beginning to return to the streets and parks of New Westminster. It should come as no surprise. We're barreling full stream ahead into summer, and we're beginning to see many changes in how we're dealing with this pandemic. But even with those changes, chances are that it will prove to be a summer like we have never experienced before. With day and summer camps still on hold, and many parents continuing to work from home, this summer may just prove to be the summer of the family, with a staycation just one of many options for families in New West. All of this extra family activity had me thinking about my own family. I grew up in a pretty standard family for a boomer. My dad worked, and my mom stayed at home and took care of the kids. She was most emphatically not a housewife, as she loved to tell us all. She was married to our dad, certainly not to our house. That was ahead of her time, and practically a feminist outlook. And that, coupled with her love of language, is probably why I became a writer. But I think that we moved frequently as much as 3,000 miles from the collection of aunties, uncles, cousins, and grandparents in Northern Ontario is what made me treasure family even more. To this day, I'll go out of my way to fly out to my family for a visit. I also have my adopted family that I love to celebrate with. Everyone from friends in my neighborhood to members of my meetup groups. But family and the idea of family has always been important to me. So I began to wonder, how are families, especially the ones with kids still at home, doing? I asked a few of my friends, people I've gotten to know through my volunteer work here in New Westminster. I found that although we're all going through this pandemic together, each family is having to find their own way to help their family through the pandemic. My first interview is with Kathleen Somerville. We became friends while we were both on the board for both the New Westminster Environmental Partners and then the New Westminster Film Society that hosts the annual film festival here in New West. An activist, a mother, and a fan of New Westminster, it was great to have some time to chat about the challenges of being a parent during the pandemic. Thanks, Denny, for inviting me to your program. Uh, my name is Kathleen Somerville. I live in New Westminster. Um, I've lived here for 11 years. I am currently um, living in Sapperton. I have two kids and I'm married to Mark. And we've been married, our anniversary is coming up. We've been married for 18 years. And we have two kids. Justin is 22 and Ava is 15. Um, up until COVID, I was working at Impact Parkinson's, uh, coaching boxing for people with Parkinson's disease. Um, I absolutely love that place. And Robin is my boss, she's amazing. Unfortunately, uh, during COVID, we, um, we had to shut down in March and uh, Robin has just announced that she's closing the gym. So she's continuing online, she's continuing the nonprofit and I'm not really sure what is going to happen with that moving forward. So I am not coaching right now. Uh, during the pandemic though, as you know, the kids are out of school. So um, Justin, my 22 year old is living on the East Coast this year for school. But I have Ava and she is in grade nine at uh, NWSS. And we've been doing online school because of COVID. So up until this point, though, I um, had been homeschooling her until grade nine. So this is the first year she had been in regular full-time school. So even though we had been homeschooling up until now, it was a real adjustment because we had all made the change over to brick and mortar school. And now she's back to being in her bedroom most of the time for her schooling. 
but uh, it's working out. So, you know, we can't complain. We only have a few weeks left, so we're really happy about that. So I'll tell you a little bit about my experience with our home learning. Um, we actually moved to New Westminster specifically for the New West Home Learners Program. It is um, a unique program in the Lower Mainland. It's absolutely amazing opportunity for learning uh, within the school district. It is considered distributed learning or DL and they have a physical building where the kids were able to attend classes twice a week and the majority of the work, the academic work was done at home and in the school it was mostly art and uh, just being in a classroom and learning how to uh, be in a classroom and what happens in regular schooling. So we had done that, Ava did that the entire program from kindergarten until grade eight, so nine years. Uh, Justin did that program for five years and uh, he went on to end up in, that's New Westminster Secondary School, in grade 10 and he graduated in 2016. Now Ava's in there because she wanted the same experience, but now we're on to pandemic homeschooling, which is different than our regular homeschooling. Uh, the teachers are still involved, but a lot more they're involved with her. In the old way, I was really in touch with Ava's teachers. Uh, we worked together, you know, to try and get her education the way we wanted to work um, with their expertise and now it's a little more free schooling um, because it's grade nine i feel like it's there's not a lot of pressure at this point so if it, she was in grade 12 i would be a lot more concerned about it but it's a lot of independent stuff she does a lot of online she meets her teachers she has meetings um, every week where she has to be at her google classroom and that's different but yeah, we're still doing a lot of the same stuff. We're still doing our science experiments in the kitchen. We're still uh, listening to her read her essays. So a lot of it is similar to how we were homeschooling, but she really misses the in-person connection. Dealing with anxiety anytime with a teenager can be a challenge and a reality that most parents do deal with because school is stressful. Um, social life is really stressful for kids. Uh, maybe the home dynamic is also stressful. We have a great home life, but still, you know, even chores and things like that can be stressful for the kids. So it has been a shift. Um, Ava's teachers have been very accommodating and understanding. The first few weeks, she didn't get very much done. She was really de-schooling a bit. Like that's a term that we use in the homeschooling community kind of coming out of that mentality of how you're learning in a school to back to home, learning on your own timetable. Uh, time management is a huge issue always for kids, even when they were in regular school. But the stress level has definitely increased. And, um, you know, we try to keep the communication open, talking about how we're feeling, how she's doing, what's going on with her friends online, you know, there was in the beginning, it was a lot of um, her being stressed out because her friends were still gathering and posting pictures online of their gatherings. And she wasn't doing that. We, we went lockdown in the middle of March and we've kind of stayed that way. We're slowly starting to come out visiting my dad a couple times, but we haven't really been back to normal yet. So, and my husband, Mark is working. He's working full time. Uh, but from home and uh, Ava's school full-time but from home so we've really tried to divide the house up a bit so that everyone has their own space and to when people have certain meetings we try to be aware of that not to be blasting our music maybe that's my fault but you know trying to keep it <laughs> professional for everybody but um, yeah, it's been a challenge. It's been a challenge for Mark because he doesn't go into Vancouver. He doesn't get dressed up in his suits. Uh, the nature of his business has changed slightly. Um, for me though, I have started my own business. And so that has been a huge um, impact on our lives. relationship that I've had with my daughter, she's 15, has changed because of the pandemic and the ensuing um, events that are happening globally 
uh, you know, with everything that's going on with the rioting and the protesting and the human rights issues that are presented constantly on the news, that's a big deal for her. And she's really interested in it. She's outraged by it. She wants to find a way to make a difference, to participate, uh, to have a voice, to help people that don't have a voice. And I'm really um, encouraged by that because I've always been an activist myself. And to see her coming in and owning her own activism at this point, wanting to make a difference, wanting to amplify, you know, the voices of people that have been marginalized, that's been a big change in her. And now she's 15, this is what starts to happen when you're 15, you start to realize what is going on in the state of the world. But at the same time, I think about, she has um, English projects where she has to write about where does she see the world being in 40 years or what kind of um, advice she would give to people like if they just landed on on the planet and what she could tell them and those kind of introspective thinking you know that's been really a lot of heavy for a 15 year old and the state of the world it's really hard for her to figure out how she wants to save it but she really does want to make a difference and have an impact and I think that's really empowering for teenagers I think that's what high school is for to start to find your voice and so I would like her to be in that environment with her peers to find that but I'm encouraged that she's still finding that, she's still feeling a draw to try to speak for other people and to be engaged. You know, it's a really good idea or a good question that you're asking about what is gonna be a permanent change after COVID and what is gonna be temporary. And we, I don't think that we know what is going to stick and what won't. I think that a little bit of the fear is going to stay and that people, are a little bit more judgmental about what other people are doing. And I think that is a reality that we're probably not gonna get away from for a long time. Um, you know, people need to make the best choices for themselves and they need to feel safe. And I, I totally encourage that. But also they need to respect other people's choices as well. And that everyone's not in the same position. Not everyone is coming at this experience from the same experience. Everyone has a different experience of what has happened during the lockdown. And, you know, that's why I think it's really important what you're doing, that you're bringing the experience to other people and saying, what are, what's going on? What, how has it been for people? What are you experiencing? And what do you hope to see in the future? And I think that we all want to see a lot of the, the old ways come back and that we're able to walk around the farmer's market and run into our friends and chat and not feel like we have to take a couple extra steps back. And that's hard, you know, that's hard to make these changes. But I think we all want to take care of each other. I think that's something that's come out of it, that we care a little bit more about each other. And if that's something that's come out of it, that is a great thing. And then also, you know, I can definitely say the parenting boards that I've been on, the social media, the things that I've seen, there are a lot of people taking care of each other. There are a lot of people reaching out, trying to help each other. And, you know, I think that that is a wonderful thing. I've seen a lot of families getting closer together, a lot of families spending time together that they never would have had the chance to if we didn't have this opportunity. And so I know for us, my family personally, we've spent enormous amounts of time together being homeschoolers for all these years. So for us, some things changed, some things didn't. I had a lot of fear in the beginning. You know, I stayed home for a long time. I didn't even go to the grocery store. Um, I've actually really barely left my house in the last two and a half months. So I think being able to feel safe has been a bit of a struggle for me because it's just the unknown. It's that fear of the unknown. You know, I have people in my life that have compromised immune systems and I worry about them and that's just another level of fear. But as we have progressed into the lockdown and now hopefully coming out the other side, I don't feel that same fear anymore. One of the biggest things that we're gonna gain as a society from our experience, our collective experience in lockdown is uh, our understanding of how we rely on other people to function and how important those people are, if it's uh, the nurses or if it's the people in the grocery store or the truck drivers, 
you know, how actually important those people are to our lives. And food security, of course, is a huge issue. Um, as you know, Denny, I'm growing a huge garden. Uh, I've been a gardener for many years. And people understanding where your food comes from, local sources as much as possible, supporting local businesses, you know, those are all the things that I really think about. Who's coming out the other end? How are we going to keep these businesses going? I know a lot of them closed and now they're coming out. And so that's the thing is that we care more about our neighbors. We care more about our local businesses. We care more about the cashier at the, at the grocery store because they're actually like risking their lives so that I can buy my groceries. So I think that what's come out is more caring, more, more time with your family, more time introspective, a lot of good things. I hope that Kathleen is right and that we come out of this pandemic with more care about our neighbors, our local businesses, and of course about each other. But she isn't alone in her fears as well. Our next interview with local graphic designer Johanna touches on this topic as well. I met Johanna as I did Kathleen through the New Westminster Film Society that hosts our annual film festival here in New West. She's very active in various organizations here in New West, and as a downtown resident, always seems to have her finger on the creative pulse of our city. But above all else, she's a mother. We got together through Zoom to talk about that recently. So my name is Johanna Bartels. I'm a graphic designer. Uh, I have been living in the city of New Westminster for over eight years. I am married. I have a kid that is five years old. Uh, the COVID has changed our life, definitely. It has been um, different. It has been challenging. Um, we have our ups and downs. Um, we live in a condo in downtown New West. So we don't, we don't meet, we are not missing as much as other people because uh, you always see people on the streets. You go for a walk, you go to the park you run into somebody, you keep distance and you say hello. We still are, have some coffee shops open. Um, they are taking measures. So we go and support the local businesses. However, it's hard, it's hard to see uh, um, restaurants closed. It's hard not to go. It's not hard not to hug people that you love. Um, it's hard to uh, be so conscious about being careful and uh, going to the market and then not be able to uh, to say hello. It's, it's hard. As a family, the hardest part is organizing, organizing our time. As Marcus homeschooling now. Uh, the teacher has been amazing. She sent in, it's no most Kids are having um, online time, so they spend too much time on the screen. In our case, uh, Marco's teacher has been amazing. She's just sent Word documents with things that he has to finish for the week. Uh, so he's not spending as much screen time as, as many kids of his age. Because he is homeschooling, then I have to spend a fair amount of time just dedicated to his education. Um, I'm enjoying it, I'm loving it, but the first month was really hard with, um, the, with timelines, like having, organizing my work time and his time and the chair time with the family. We live in a condo and that space, it makes a big difference, not having a space where I can take my time <laughs> or oh, having spaces where we can have meetings because my husband normally has he, uh, computer, he's a computer programmer so he works he's still working he hasn't stopped his company just moved online and um, he normally has meetings three times a, uh, a week and um, for that time we had to be quiet we had to be we had to be mindful of um, the noises that we do here and respecting the space and we don't have the space. <laughs> so before the pandemic, Marco was going to, uh, to kindergarten. Um, so normally the routine was his father was dropping him at school. Then uh, he went to school during the time I was working. Um, I used to go to coffee shops and work from there. Um, then after a uh, time of picking him up, I was in charge for picking him up. And then in the afternoon, we used to do activities together, going to classes or 
just playing at the park. We try to keep a routine. We try to shower every morning and exercise, but it's no, no as, as strong. And I kind of miss that. It. It's, it's good for your mind to have a structure, a time structure. The other thing that is, is completely different is how um, how we socialize. And one of the reasons why we live in downtown U.S. is because I like we, we like to enjoy restaurants and we like to enjoy coffee shops and we go to the farmers market every Thursday. Um, we go to the we just to go to Fridays on Front every Friday. Um, and we know, like, because we are immigrants, our support system or, or emotional support comes from the people that we know here. And now we don't have those relationships. Are Like, they are there. We can pick up the phone and, and talk to them or visit them from far. But it's not the same. First, the first month was the hardest because, like, no having separation having seven days a week, 24 hours a day is, is really hard. Um, especially for me, for him, I, for him was easy. He, when he, that he's focused on work, it's his focus on work. Like I cannot do that. I am always juggling Marco work house. And it's a, it's a personal thing that I, maybe it's because I'm the mom, I have the role of the mom. I don't know if it's because I'm female. I don't know if it's my own thing. But yeah, that was one of the main issues with me at the first the first month. Yeah, like it's half, like the, um, half of my projects, half of my uh, clients um, actually are not ordering right now my services. So my, my yeah, my income came, was cut half but also my expenses have been cut half. It hasn't been that bad, economically speaking. And most of his classmates, they are, like we have regular meetings, so they don't lose those skills, <laughs> such as skills. They are the ones actually who are saying, oh, you have to keep distance, or you are too close. So most of them are really um, conscious about it. And it's, it's, it became more like a game. Like, oh, no, you are too close. So, for example, they have a, a game now that is called the black hole. And is that if you are too close, the black hole is going to absorb you and you're going to die. So instead of playing tag, they are playing black hole. The harder part is that he was getting into a discipline of schooling and meeting, having a regular schedule for going to school and coming back. Going back to school for him is going to be really hard because now he feels that he can accomplish the same academics in a few hours, instead of going to nine to three. But then, and then he has more free time. That we have for summer uh, are completely different. Normally for this time of the year, we were like going already camping and going, um, uh, normally we go to the Okanagan Valley uh, this time of the year. Uh, we haven't, we are discussing if we are gonna go or not, but camping is a, a no-no for us right now. It's, it's also hard for a kid to understand that he cannot interact with other kids that he doesn't know. Like normally when we go camping and Marco ran into a kid that is the same age or similar age group, they, they just play, it's, it's natural. Uh, but we don't know the family, we don't know if they are, uh, taking precautions and uh, my husband has asthma and uh, he's one of the risk um, population. So we had to take care of us to take care of him. Thinking about ca going like finding a cabin, um, but we are not pushing. If we don't have a plan, a safe plan, we don't go. We still do a lot of activities together. We, we really like um, riding bicycles. So we ride our bicycle um, three times a week. Um, my husband is working regular hours, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, but Wednesday he's just working part-time. So he can stay, well, like we can do something together in the middle of the week. The things that I wish uh, people will take from this is uh, that we don't need too many things. That I, like, 
you don't need uh, to get the latest TV and you don't need to get uh, a new car every five years. You don't need to get something new every other year. That thing is, I hope it's gonna stay with us because what we really need is not even toilet paper, <laughs> but the basic things are, are really basic and are really important. And um, what you eat is important. So I was, I, I hope people are going to start thinking about supporting local uh, businesses and local farmers because they are the ones that are, not, are there working for us while we are struggling and we don't have to go to Costco every time to get our groceries. Come on, buy from the local farmer that they are doing and, and they are not bringing viruses. They are, they are here. That is going to be the, the, the thing that we learn with this pandemic that as minimalist we can be and as close as we can be from home, uh, that should be a forever philosophy to follow in your life. Maybe the, the most important thing right now like for people is don't forget that we have survived worse things. Johanna's words echo in my mind as I walk through the park. It's the weekend before Canada Day. I've been out walking thinking of the people I interviewed as I watch many local families once again out enjoying our parks. I've noticed that they're out in greater numbers than ever. It really doesn't matter if the day is beautiful or gray and threatening to rain. They come out and we all watch as the kids laugh and play. But being New Westminster and unpredictable British Columbia, the day turns warm and sunny. Soon, many will head to the cool of the shade, but not the little ones. Kids scream and laugh as they dance through the water in the playgrounds. July is coming. Summer is coming. For families and for all of us, what kind of summer will this be in the midst of this pandemic? I think the answer is up to all of us, to you and me, to our friends, to our families, to make the most of what we have, to accept what we're given, and to be kind to one another as the kids play and we work to stay safe because in the end of it all, that's really all we need. So stay safe and be kind to each other out there. Find your peace.